Uh, welcome in the show, my friend. Thank you very much, my friend. Can you uh, tell the, the viewers, can you tell the viewers uh, who you are? Maybe I know you, of course. And I, know, I know you very well. But can you tell the audience who you are? Nice to hear. My name is uh, Andy van Assema, is the back name. And I'm uh, an the owner of Sportfishing Dalslop. And uh, where where are you at the moment? At the moment I'm uh, driving a boat because on uh, days like today, Saturday and Sunday, it's uh, uh, most often the hour most busy is there on the week. So I'm uh, on the boat and everything. And now I'm in fact uh, ready with it and on the way home and it's the last drive for today. Okay, okay. Uh, can you tell me a little bit more about Sport Fishing Dalsland? Yes, of course. I'm uh, happy to tell you. It's uh, yeah, what we do, in fact, is uh, rent out uh, quality houses, uh, good fishing boats. Uh, we have fishing guides, and uh, that way we try to provide uh, fantastic fishing weeks and fishing trips for uh, in Dalsland, Sweden. Mostly on Lake Vannan, but as you know, and probably a lot of you know, uh, it's many other smaller lakes in the area also. And so we're uh, pretty familiar with all of them. And that's in a, in a short nutshell what we do. Okay. And uh, what's your relation with the Predator Tour? Ah, that's a tricky question. <laughs> It's, uh, I've been following Predator Tour uh, all the time that you run it in the Netherlands. And yeah, as you and me both remember, at one point, at one point, you asked me, is there a possibility that we can uh, yeah, try to do something like that in Sweden on Lake Venom? And uh, actually, I know you for a very long time. And the idea about that it, uh, was actually, it sounded very great to me. And yeah, at that point we started, and I think you remember the first time uh, you did it on an inner lake. At that point I was not involved, and then you didn't run it in Sweden for a few more years. And at some point we went together and did the first time on Lake Vanna. And after that, the first time I think we had maybe 17, 18 boats, correct me if I'm wrong. 14. And after that... It 14 even, okay. Yeah, and after that it went uh, pretty popular and yeah, now we are ended up with uh, the past edition would have been uh, up to 150 boats. Unfortunately, due to all the shit we all experienced, that isn't going to happen and yeah, so here we are now. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I already uh, spoke about a little about you uh, this morning and about uh, the competition for next year. And of yeah. course, you and I, we will uh, hoping that it will be run for the next year in, uh, in, in normal conditions, so to say. Because yeah. this is pretty unique in, in an online competition, but it's not the real deal. Uh, we no, are... it's, it's not the real deal, but I think you do... Uh... I don't watch it the whole day, of course, got something to do every now and then, but yeah, to me it looks really professional and I think you do a great job with it and I can imagine that for the future it will be a, hopefully a, a good combination of this. Yeah, well I can already tell you this, this will be for, for the Predator Tour the standard. Uh, well, we spoke about it yesterday after the first broadcast and, and of course, well, I can tell you this now because you're a, a partner of the event as well, that uh, yeah, future events will be broadcasted like this. Uh, this is the real deal for us now. And the thing to improve is that we get camera guys on board because yeah, lessons learned is, is that the people, the fishermen, they are too busy with fishing and I, I'm a fisherman as well and, and so are you. So it's yeah. really understandable that they don't have time to make live streams and so on. 
and I already had uh, also an interview with uh, with uh, Mercury, uh, the big boss. Yeah. He was here in the studio, and he said, oh, "We will supply camera guys, and we we will bring it up to a higher level." So I think, yeah, the, it's it's a it's a positive thing. This and it can be growing bigger uh -huh. and bigger. It could be an option, but I, I really understand because, yeah, I mean, I know how it works that, that people at the moment they're fishing. I mean, they, they don't want to yeah, go into camera actions and things like that. And yeah, probably a few of them are a little bit shy for the camera. Also, not everybody wants it, but yeah, I think overall it's a it's a great system. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, it, it, it will never replace the original predator as it was because yeah i'd still think most fun is just when we uh, meet and greet and have some fun all together but it's a uh, it's a perfect combination to do with uh, yeah like this and hopefully in the future together with uh, regular events uh, again yeah yeah uh well we, we can bring out that's that's yeah, for us it's uh, we already spoke about it but next year's event uh we will do it in September. Uh, we have, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, it's it's not a secret. We have some problems with, uh, uh, yeah, like uh, pre-spawning fishing. Uh, can you tell me the latest news about that? Uh, how the wh why we can't fish in 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 spawning time anymore? And of course, we both understand it. But maybe, uh, yeah, you can tell it uh, a little bit to the audience. Yes, well, you know, it was uh, back at the time, it was a big thing and yeah, it, maybe it exploded a little thanks to the social media. And I mean, in Sweden, it's, it's just still allowed to fish in springtime, but there's particular people. Uh, and I can imagine that a little bit also myself, to be honest. Yeah, me too. That, uh, don't yeah, exactly. I mean, we, we're all anglers uh, in the heart and I mean, it's really much fun to fish uh, around the spawning time, especially a little bit before. But I can also imagine there's, there's a particular group of people that says, well, we shouldn't uh, push it too much in the, what they say, the most vulnerable time of the, of the pikes to have big competitions and, and disturb the, the whole process. Yeah. And I mean, no, nobody has the exact uh, knowledge about that. I mean, we're not <clears throat> uh, biologists. And I also think that pikes don't spawn on the calendar month. It's uh, more a matter of, uh, yeah, all the circumstances that come together. But yeah, I think just out of respect, it's a good decision that we do it uh, later on in the year. And I mean, it's still a great competition. It's still everybody has the same chances to catch some nice fishes. So for us, it doesn't matter so much. And I think in that way, we uh, yeah, hopefully show some respect to all the organizations and the, and the people around here. Yeah, of course. Well, we, we, we are... Again. We are both in it like, uh, well, we, we, we spoke uh, a couple of weeks ago and we had good conversations about it. So, yeah, for us, it's crystal clear, but sometimes yeah, we have to inform the audience as well. Uh, well, enough about the Predator Tour, Andy. Uh, well, a lot of people still want to go fishing in Sweden. Well, I think you have a top destination for big bikes. Uh is, is it allowed for uh, the people to come to Sweden? Uh, what are the restrictions about the COVID-19? Yes, absolutely, it's allowed. And what we noticed, how well, as you know, and I think uh, most of the people can guess about it, we had a, a hell of a year, in fact. It, I think I, di I didn't make the exact calculations yet, but I think it's uh, uh, close near to 70% less bookings than uh, in a normal year. So yeah, that, that yeah, just no fun. And at the moment, that Sweden has been opened up all the time. And uh, I mean, we, we don't have hard rules, except for a few rules, uh, by means of no events with more than 50 people. The main reason why we had to cancel the Predator Tour. And yeah, actually, you've been here and you don't notice too much about all the 
corona things going on. I mean, it's not so much people living here and uh, Swedish people are by itself already a little bit into social distancing. It's it's in the people's, uh, it's a people thing here normally. But the, the biggest part is that it's often uh, blocked now. For example, we have a few uh, guests that were supposed to come tomorrow and then all of a sudden their flights are canceled. So it's still a lot of things. It's allowed to come here and it's no problem. It's uh, th this is one of the first weeks actually we're pretty much fully booked, but uh, we're not there yet. I mean, no. I don't know what's going to happen uh, between now and three weeks again. No, I think we have to hope for better times. And uh, yeah, like all business uh, people, like like you uh, and also me, we are uh, all have troubles with with all the restrictions and the virus. And of of course, we take it all serious. But yeah, sometimes it's really frustrated, so to say. To uh, we we want to step up, and and yeah, we we are blocked of the situation. Yeah, it's exactly as you say. It's, uh, I mean, it's it's pretty sad, of course. Uh, yeah, like I said, the same for us. It's, uh, I think we we got uh, like I just said. I think we got thirty percent left, maybe for this year of the bookings we normally have. So yeah, that's just uh, a pretty expensive year. But I mean, you can look sad and uh, cry about it, but it doesn't help. It is what it is, and. Everybody has to deal with the situation and yeah, we just make the best out of it and hopefully it's uh, <clears throat> going to be better next year. Yeah, we will. And until then, uh, and we, we survive and we just keep smiling. That's the best you can do. It's always good to keep smiling. Yeah, why not? Yeah. Well, Andy, I have to stop uh, the the broadcast now. I will invite you to come uh, live tomorrow uh, for at uh, the end of the day. Uh, yeah. I will thank you for now having this conversation uh, with us. It's always nice to have yeah, uh, partners in the, in the broadcast so the people can see uh, who we work with and who have a relation with uh, the Predator Tour, so to say. Uh, well, as a partner of the event, but also my very good friend, I will thank you for today. Uh, give my regards to your lovely wife and I hope to see you soon in uh, in the broadcast and uh, maybe have some uh, surprises coming up. Yeah, I will do that. And, uh, and again, I think you do a pretty nice job with, the, with your team over there. It's uh, really cool to see and to follow. So keep up the good work and for all the competitors, participants. Yeah, may the best win. And uh, feel free to contact me because I'm uh, also thinking about a little surprise for one of the winners. Okay. More well, about that tomorrow. More about that tomorrow. Well, Andy, take care. And uh, it was nice to see you uh, all the way from uh, Sweden in our broadcast. And uh, we keep in touch and I'll see you tomorrow. Same to you. Many thanks. Good Yo, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.